So the other day I was editing one of my landscape photos using Adobe Lightroom Classic and I reached that point of the edit where I wanted to start making some local changes to the image. I wanted to affect only specific areas of the photo, not the entire photo, but just, you know, specific areas to go in and, you know, tweak the tonal values, tweak the contrast, tweak the color, do a little bit of dodging and burning. And for that, the masking tools in Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw are fantastic. But what I caught myself doing was more or less creating the exact same masks each and every time I sat down to edit a new image in Lightroom. Why not just create presets for the masks that I use most often so that with one click, I can just click on a preset and I have a pre-built mask that is positioned, that has you know the, the adjustments that I want and is ready to go to help speed up my workflow. So I'm not doing the same thing over and over again with every image. So that's exactly what I did. And I built one just to see if it would help and see if it you know, would actually make a difference. And it totally did. And I ended up using it quite a lot. So I built more. And next thing I knew, I had a whole collection of, <laughs> of uh, masking presets that I built for myself. And then I thought, well, maybe some of you would like these as well. Maybe some of you would like to check them out. And maybe some of you would also be interested in uh, using these as a as a foundation to be building your own custom mask presets. Because I think once you start building these and you start, especially ones that you utilize uh, quite often in your own work and with the type of photographs that you typically create, it's extremely helpful. So what I've done here is I've packaged together all the presets that I made and I'm offering them, you know, absolutely free. They are a free download. You can, you know, get them, you know, using the link down below in the video description. Enter zero for the price if you don't want to pay anything. That's totally fine. Or if you'd like to, I don't know, buy me a coffee or something, feel free. But you don't have to. These presets are totally free. You know, just enter zero. You can download them and install them to Lightroom. And uh, now I'm going to show you what they can do. So here in my preset panel, I have three groups. I have a selection group. I have a dodge and burn group and a clarity and color group. Now the selection group, these are just really basic masks. These are more just like shortcuts for the, uh, for some of these intelligent masks that are now in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw. Things like being able to select the sky, select a subject, select a background, but these also save you an extra step. Like I found myself constantly <laughs> like creating a select sky mask and then selecting the inverse of the sky. Well, with this, you can just do select sky inverse and that mask is automatically created and I'll click on it and show the overlay and there you see it. Uh, let's see. Then another couple uh, that I use uh, uh, fairly often, I have select highlights and select shadows and these are luminance range masks. And, you know, as you can see, that's select highlights and that just selects the brightest parts of the image. Okay. Then in here, I have some dodging and burning masks and in here, I have a number of linear gradients and radial gradients that are placed at, at different areas of the image, different regions of the image, and then they either darken or brighten uh, exposure as a baseline that you may then go in and tweak and adjust thereafter. So for example, I have burn bottom here, and this just you know adds a linear gradient to the bottom of the image with, uh, with a negative exposure adjustment. Similar thing on the left side, the right side, the top, and then they're dodging ones that that do the same as well. So if there's like a bright or a dark area around, you know, one particular area of the image, you can just throw that linear gradient on, make some adjustments and tweak it however you want. And then we have things like I was describing earlier, like burn sky linear. So this is a sky uh, selection with a linear gradient that's been intersected with it that gives you, uh, let me turn it on, that darkens the top portion of the sky and automatically punches out uh, the foreground from the image. Now I can, you know, come in here now and, you know, select the mask. I can move it. I can adjust the, uh, the intensity. Oh, and actually to that point, one of the things that presets can now do in Lightroom, you can now adjust the amount. You can now adjust the strength of the effect. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, you could make a, make an adjustment through here as well without going into the settings over here. Like if you just wanted to dial in a little bit of whatever the particular mask is doing, that's another option for you. Okay, another thing I like to do with landscape images, and this is actually a really good uh, example for this one. I also like to burn like the, the corners of the foreground. Uh, typically at the bottom of the photo. And, and that's especially true with this one here because we have this really bright rock over here down in the lower right, which is really distracting. Well, we can just do burn right bottom and that places a linear gradient 
right there with a uh, half stop exposure adjustment placed on top of it. And I can then make additional changes to that if I want to. There's also a burn left bottom over here, which creates another one. Another kind of mask that I typically make is almost like a, like a, like a bowl shape across the bottom of the image where I just want to, you know, darken the corners and the foreground across uh, the bottom in the center and then uh, up and across the right. It's almost like half of a, of a vignette effect. It's like half a vignette without affecting the sky, that kind of thing. So I have one of those in here for burn bottom and corners. And this burns the immediate foreground of the image, but without touching the sky. Because if we come over here and open up this mask and look, there are three uh, linear gradients in here with the sky uh, subtracted. So by combining all of them together, then you get one uniform shape. You may, re you may remember back in the day before we could uh, combine masks together. You have to like create one linear gradient, another linear gradient, another linear gradient here, and then try to you know balance them all with one another. Well, now we can just combine all of them into one, which is what you know, this mask does here. And this is one that um, is especially helpful, I think, for uh, images like this. And again, I can uh, adjust the, you know, strength of this. If I want it to be a little bit weaker, I can just dial it down uh, all at once, or I can intensify it. Just a really nice little mask that, you know, for me, comes in really handy. So yeah, that should give you a pretty good idea of how these presets work. Again, if you would like to download them, absolutely free. They are linked down below in the video description. But now I want to show you how to do this yourself. If you're inspired by this and you want to create your own presets, let me uh, give you some tips for how to do it. You know, first, obviously, you want to create your mask. And let me just draw like a quick linear gradient up here. Maybe do a little bit of darkening. And I'm going to intersect this with the sky so that we're only applying it to the sky. Okay, so there's our simple little mask. <laughs> All right, so what I recommend doing is uh, double clicking on your mask and then giving it a name so that you are able to reference it later so it's easier to find. And let's just call this select sky uh, gradient dark, something like that. Okay, then come over here to the presets panel. You click on the plus symbol, then click on create preset. And then in this window here, we then give our preset a name. Let's call this uh, select sky gradient dark. We're gonna name it exactly the same. And then the next field down, this is group. Now this is where you actually create groups for presets in Lightroom. I always kind of feel like this should be part of the plus symbol. You should just be able to do it there, like you know, create a folder as you would with like a collection or anything else. But for whatever reason, it's, uh, it's here. So <laughs> this is where you do it. So you come in here, uh, click on new group, and let's just call this uh, masking custom, something like that. Okay, so this is gonna create our new preset and it's gonna put it inside of this group. And then if, you know, just to be on the safe side, I would recommend for your settings, come down here and, and click on check none so that nothing is selected, so that nothing is included in this preset except the mask. And so we click on the mask that we want. And then down here at the bottom, under advanced settings, you see where it says support amount slider. Now, this is that amount slider I was talking about before, where you can raise or lower the intensity of that preset. This really only makes sense if, you're, if your mask has some adjustments applied to it, like contrast, exposure, color, you know, anything like that. Otherwise, if it's just a selection, if it's just a, a mask, that is not going to do anything. So it may be clear in those, you know, for the latter, just to disable that. But if you have settings that have been applied that you want to be able to adjust uh, the strength of using that slider, then you would enable that. So because we do, I'm just gonna keep it enabled. And then I'm gonna come down here and click Create. And now we have our new preset group with our new preset inside. Okay, now at this point, you're done. Uh, if you're happy with your preset, awesome. Uh, enjoy it, but there's one additional thing that we can do here. For those of you who wanna go a little bit further and just fine tune it a little bit more, one of the things that, um, that honestly drives me a little crazy sometimes is that when you create a linear gradient or a radial gradient in Lightroom, it's not possible uh, to like uh, to get it perfectly aligned with like the edge of the image or you know put the radial gradient like dead center in the middle, something like that. So in order to make sure that our linear gradients and our radial gradients are positioned perfectly, we have to go into the preset file and actually edit the data inside of it. Now, I know that probably sounds scary, but it's, it's really not that bad if you've never done this before. What you want to do is 
uh, right click on your preset and then choose uh, show in finder or show in file explorer if you're windows whatever it's called and then that's going to show us the preset file i'm going to open this in bb edit and here is the xml data for the preset that i just created now i know scary but <laughs> but it's really not it's not that bad uh what i recommend looking for is come down here and see where it says 0x 0y full x full y these are the coordinates of the linear gradient that i just created and you'll see similar numbers here for a radial gradient or you know whatever it is that you're creating and usually you can tell by looking at these numbers if you were fairly careful drawing it and you you know drew it you know in in more or less the exact place where you wanted it to be these numbers will be pretty close to to being correct and you just need to kind of you know massage them a little bit so for example we have like 0.44 and then 0.53 and then 0.44 it's pretty clear to me that those are trying to be 0.5 so we're just going to round this up uh, round this one down same for this one here and then this one here is negative 0.021543 yeah that's clearly intended to be zero so just going to make that zero and then we save the preset file and then you want to quit and relaunch Lightroom so you get the latest version of that preset you just edited and then I'm going to come over here click on the same preset again and it's going to find the sky apply the gradient and now it's well now it's kind of hard to tell with this one but that linear gradient has now been properly aligned to the top of the image and now it's drawing down uh halfway into it mathematically perfectly so now if this is like applied to a portrait image or some other image uh it will be aligned just so and that that you know a little bit of extra tweaking is something that i did with all the different presets um, that are part of this collection and again speaking of that if you want to download the masking presets that i made and try them out and uh and hey give me some feedback on them let me know what you think if you enjoy using them let me know if you have any recommendations for additional presets that i should build that i should include uh if i were to come out with a second version by all means feel free to give me some feedback if you would like to you'll find a link to those uh to those masking presets down below in the video description and uh, download them enjoy them and uh, let me know what you think so that is it for this video everyone hope you enjoyed it i will see you next time